Okay, so the other night I was reading my son a bedtime story and that book was a Paw Patrol book. Parents out there, you know what Paw Patrol is, right? Like, I love watching Paw Patrol, it's so cute. There's a guy called Ryder, he's got lots of pups. They're superheroes. Uh, Marshall's my favorite. Like, if you watch Paw Patrol, if you're a parent and you know what I'm talking about, let me know who your favorite pup is down below. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I can only apologize for wasting 20 seconds of your life. But anyway, the point of this is that in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a pattern, more specifically, a Paw Patrol inspired bone pattern. <laughs> <laughs> okay, genuinely, if you started watching this and you're thinking, what is this guy talking about? What on earth is Paw Patrol? I'm sorry, this is gonna be a good tutorial. It's a really, really cool pattern technique. I promise it will be worth it. Um, if you've never watched Paw Patrol, I'd definitely recommend it. It's, I mean, I'm 32 and I love watching it. But anyway, we're gonna be creating a pattern in this tutorial and we're gonna to jump to the screen now and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okie dokie, so we're now in Illustrator. I've got a new artboard, 1920 by 1080. And the first thing I'm going to do is create the bone shape. So there's gonna be like a bone pattern, lots of bones everywhere. So we'll left click and hold on the rectangle tool, select the ellipse tool, zoom in nice and close. And I'm just gonna left click to draw a circle. Make sure I hold shift as well, just to keep everything perfectly circular. And then we'll go over here to the bottom of the toolbar, set that fill to none, and just swap that stroke and fill around, just so we have a solid black circle. Next, I'm gonna use a shortcut to duplicate this circle because I don't want to go and recreate it. That's just, that's just wasting time. So we can hold down Alt or Option on the keyboard, and we can also hold down Shift, and it will create a copy directly underneath, like so. And then I can do the same again, drag over both of these, hold Alt or Option and Shift on the keyboard, click and drag, and there we go. I've got the, uh, the two ends of the bone, and then I'm going to just click on the rectangle tool, and then just draw the centerpiece. And you can spend time lining this up so it's vertically central if you like. And what I'm gonna do is just select everything once that's done. And down here from the Pathfinder options, I'm gonna select Unite. Or if you're on an older version of Illustrator like CS6 or something, don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you high and dry. Just go to Window, down to Pathfinder, and you've got that panel up here. So there we go. Top left option, Unite, and it will merge everything into a single shape. Fantastic, so what we can do now is select the shape, and from the swatches panel, again, if you don't see that, just go up to window, the swatches panel will be there. I'm just gonna double click on any swatch. It doesn't matter what swatch it is at the moment. The important thing is that we check global just so we can easily change the swatch once it's part of a pattern later on. In fact, I'm gonna go and make two swatches, one for the background color and one for the bone pattern color. So I think this is going to be the lighter blue, the cyan. If I just zoom out a little bit, I'm just gonna hover over the corner and you can see I can rotate this. And if I hold down shift, it will snap to 45 degree increments. So we'll do one like this. And then again, I'm gonna do that little, uh, that little technique, that hold alter option, drag to create a copy, hold shift, and it will snap along this 45 degree line. And we'll snap it to there. And then I'm gonna rotate holding shift again. So when I'm rotating, when I'm moving this, I'm just making sure to keep shift held down just so everything kind of stays in line. I don't want this to kind of move off out here because it will make the pattern look a bit weird. Unless you're going for weird, then by all means, go for it. So I'm gonna probably move this a little bit away. Now these are quite big uh, in respect to these artboards, so I'm just gonna select everything and scale them down holding shift. If I don't hold shift, it will, well, it will quite honestly mess up the proportions and skew everything out of shape. So I'll make this nice and small. We'll zoom back in. And then what I'm gonna do is drag over everything and go up to Object, down to Pattern and select Make. And you can see we enter this crazy pattern mode and we've got bones everywhere. And well, this is fantastic because it actually takes us into like a separate mode where it isolates what we've selected and now we can work on our pattern. And we can actually see how our pattern's going to look. 
So we've got this dialog box here. You can choose the tile type. This is how it's going to repeat that selected group of objects across your pattern. So if I change this, you can see in real time how that pattern is going to be tiled differently. I'm gonna keep this nice and simple with grid at the moment. This works for me. And down here, I've got the width and the height, so I could adjust this. You can see it brings them all closer together. Or what I can do is maybe bump this up and it spreads them further apart. So what I'm gonna do is just click in the box and use the up and down arrow keys on the keyboard. Like so, I can really fine tune exactly how kind of tightly packed I'd like my pattern to be. So we'll go for something like this. There's a few other checkboxes and ways that you can choose how things overlap. You can experiment with that and you can see how it changes in real time. You can change the number of copies as well so you can preview how your pattern is going to look. Uh, all these different settings, dim copies to 50%. So essentially I can dim all of the copies so you can see there everything that's like just being repeated is now dimmed, which means I can focus on the pattern itself. So for example, if I wanted to go and edit my pattern, I could go here and you can see everything within this blue tile here, this tile edge, I can draw and it will then propagate that to the rest of the pattern. So you can actually design patterns in real time, which is pretty cool, but we're not gonna do that because we're exclusively using bones in this pattern. Uh, so once we're done, we can go up to the top here, we can save a copy and this will save this as a new swatch if you are like editing an existing one. Or we can click on done or we can cancel that altogether. So if I go done and you can see it takes us back to our document and where's our pattern gone? Our pattern is gone. Well, it's actually gone to the swatches panel. And we can see that here, it's called new pattern. I didn't give it a name. Ah, oh, rookie mistake. If you're making your pattern, give it a name. But it's not the end of the world because uh, well, it's only a pattern really, but we can double click, go back and I can call this, <laughs> let's call it Paw Patrol Bones. And I can actually go back in, make some changes to this pattern and it will propagate those changes if I click on done to my document. So we've created the pattern now. Let's, uh, let's just move the bones all the way over here. And I'll just grab the rectangle tool. You can do this with any shape. You could have a circle, a star, it doesn't matter. What we're gonna do now is go up to here to our swatches panel. And this pattern we've created is essentially just going to work like any other fill. We can click this and look at that. We've got some bones. Pretty cool, right? Now, if I close the swatches panel down and resize this, holding shift, you'll see that the bones scale as well. Now, you might not want that. You might want them to say to stay at their like their native size. So I've scaled them down now, they've gone a lot smaller, but if I go back to the swatches panel and just click on that again, it will reapply that swatch at its native size. And there we go. So if you do resize this and it scales your pattern up or down and you want to kind of set it back to that consistent native size, just make sure you click on the swatch again. Or like I said, we can make this even bigger. I might want it to scale up, which looks fine like that. I'll keep it a bit scaled. I can double click on that swatch. It isolates the original pattern. So I'm kind of in this separate isolation mode. And well, we could go and add a circle. Let's go and add some circles in there just for fun. And you can see these circles find their way into the sample as well. And we can click done or save this as a new swatch if we like. But I'm pretty happy with my swatch. Click done and you can see that those circles and everything else, all those changes are propagated into your pattern. Oh, wait, yeah, there's more to this tutorial. I almost forgot. So we've got these colors, they look fantastic. What we're gonna do is we're gonna select the rectangle tool again and just draw a rectangle behind our blue bones. And I'm gonna make sure that the fill for this is set to blue. This is the darker blue. Go to object, arrange, send this to the back. So there we go, we've got two colors. We have our dark blue background and we have our blue bones and circles on top in a lighter blue. Now, these aren't the colors I want, but because these are global swatches, I can double click on this blue that I use to create the patterns. And as I adjust this with preview check, you can see the color is changing in real time. So I don't have to like go back into the pattern or go back and change the original bones or anything. I just update the global swatch and it updates every 
instance of that. Same for the dark blue. This is way too dark and heavy. I want something a little bit lighter. There we go, a bit more cutesy. That looks nice. Oh, there we go. There we go. Really, really easy. And if we just zoom back in, we can see that that is, well, that is our final pattern. And there we go. That concludes the Paw Patrol pattern tutorial with added bones and circles. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions or comments or you'd like to just discuss all things Paw Patrol, then let me know down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.